So our study is designed to look at the relationship between prenatal as well as early life exposure to a variety of chemicals as well as exposures to adverse social environments as they may impact uh, behavior, particularly risk-taking behavior in later childhood among teenagers. We're studying a group of teenagers who were born in the 1990s to moms who lived in neighborhoods and towns that are near the New Bedford Harbor Superfund site. And we chose that community in part because there are a number of exposures, both chemical and social, in that area that are of concern. And there's two general categories of risk-taking behavior or risky behavior that we'll assess in this study. The first is behaviors that you can measure using standardized questionnaires, standardized instruments. The second kind of risk-taking behavior that we'll look at in this population are behaviors that actually result in adverse health outcomes. So for example, we're going to study how teenage pregnancies may be related to some of our exposures. Teenage pregnancies being likely the result of risky sexual activity on the part of young girls and boys. So in doing this type of analysis, we're trying to replicate real-world exposure situations in which people, including the children in our study, are typically exposed to multiple different chemicals and multiple environmental factors from the social environment at the same time. So except for lead and some other focused exposures, we don't fully understand how chemicals that are common in the environment and social adversity that's common in many communities impacts children's behavior, especially risk-taking behavior. We're selecting chemicals and social environmental factors that are common in a number of Massachusetts communities and trying to understand how those factors may impair brain development and result in risk-taking behaviors in childhood as well as adulthood. If we understand how people are exposed to chemicals as well as social stressors and we have the evidence of how those exposures can affect health, we can then try to understand what the health benefits would be if we reduced exposures. Uh, this involves using methods such as health risk assessment that the government commonly uses to evaluate the benefits of a variety of different interventions. So my research focuses on the effects on behavior among individuals who are exposed to drinking water pollution in the Cape Cod area of Massachusetts. This area of Massachusetts was affected by a solvent called tetrachloroethylene, or PCE. It contaminated the drinking water on Cape Cod when it leached from a vinyl liner that was placed in the water distribution pipes. As a result of this exposure, which occurred over a 15-year period, tens of thousands of individuals were exposed to contaminated drinking water. Now PCE, or tetrachloroethylene, is a known neurotoxin. It's known to have effects on the brain. But most of this information comes from adults who are exposed via their work. And there's very little information on what the effects might be among people who were exposed either while they were in the womb or in early childhood from a different type of exposure that would occur through the drinking water high levels of early life exposure increase the risk of illicit drug use. And this work needs to continue, and my next step is to examine the combined effect of the social environment in the family and community, as well as the exposure to tetrachloroethylene on the risk of illicit drug use. So as we learn more about how chemicals and uh, non-chemical social factors can affect risk-taking behavior, the big question becomes how can we use that information to improve the lives of people living in New Bedford, living in Cape Cod, or really near any Superfund site across the country.